The switch function is absolutely brilliant for replacing the nested if statements. And you can do that either in Excel, you can do that in DAX, but guess what? For some reason, the switch function is not available in Power Query. Hmm. How ridiculous is that? In this video, I'm gonna show you a technique which is where you can almost replicate the behavior of the switch function and not write those nested if statements. All right, you ready? Let's go check it out. All right, I'm in Excel Power Query here. On one side, I have the data loaded, very simple data, nothing that complicated. We just have two columns. The first one is the date, the second one is the amount. And based on the amount, I would like to give some commission. And here is the logic for commission. Now, if you take a look at the logic, the logic states something like this. If the amount is in between 10 and 12,000, then give a 10% commission. If the amount is between 12 and 14,000, then 15%. The next band is 14 to 15, actually 14 to 14 and a half. That's 20% and anything above 14 and a half is 25% commission. Now, if you were to try to do this in Power Query, you would have to write a nested if statement. Let's just take a look at how would that nested if statement look like? All right, to be able to write the nested if, what you can do is you can go over to the add columns and you can create a conditional column. That's one way of writing the nested if, but it doesn't really give me the flexibility and the freedom of writing the and conditions. And hence, I would choose to write a custom column and write the if statement by myself. Now, I'm gonna call this as commission using nested if, and my formula is gonna be something like this. So I will start off with an if statement, and I'm gonna say if the amount column is greater than or equal to 10,000, and my amount column is less than or equal to, let's say, 12,000, then I would give a 10% commission. And the way to write that is 0.1, else, then I will move on to the next line and I will start to write the next if. Now I'm gonna quickly complete that and discuss the if statement with you. All right, so here is my if statement and what you can see is that I have written all the conditions and I have layered my if statements into three layers. So here's the outmost if and then inside that there is another if and there is another if and that's my else statement although it's absolutely fine, but it's kind of tedious to write if conditions this way, you might as well miss a part of the if and it starts to give you error. Is there a better way of writing that, perhaps using a switch statement? Yes, there is. At the moment, I'm gonna click on okay and confirm to this formula, seeing that I do get the right result, but let's just try to write that using a switch statement instead. All right, let's just start to create one more custom column and plug in the switch statement or something that probably looks like the switch statement, not exactly the switch statement. So I'm gonna go over to the add columns tab and create a custom column. In the custom column, I'm gonna name that as commission using switch. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a list and in the list, I will write all my conditions. And how do you create a list? I'm sure you've taken a look at one of my past videos before. If you wanna initiate a list, you have to start with a curly bracket. If you haven't checked out the video on list exclusively, I've done a video on that and you're gonna find that incredibly helpful. I'm gonna leave a link and you should go watch that as well. Nevertheless, lists to begin with. So I will start the bracket, a curly braces, and I will close the curly braces, and this is my blank list. In the blank list, I will paste all my conditions. Now that's my first condition, which is where amount is greater than or equal to 10,000, and amount is less than or equal to 12,000. After every single condition, you have to separate that out with a comma. That is the first condition or first item of the list, the second condition or the second item of the list, the third item, and eventually the fourth item of the list. Now, once you have done that, what you can do is you can just simply click on OK, and what you're going to get is nothing but a list. And if you just peek into the list, you can see that here I get a true and false. Now, if you just take a look at the true and the false statement here, in this list that we just created, the second condition was true, and therefore we get a true right here. And if I take a look at the second one, the first condition was true, which is nothing but this particular condition. The amount is actually between 10 and 12,000. That's the amount that I can take a look at. And that's the reason why the first condition here gives you a true. Let's continue to write the formula ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the gear icon and open up the formula. Now from here on, if I wanna make things a tad bit easier, I'll have to create variables so that I can store the list and other work that I'll have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to write my let statement. So I'll just say let, and let's just say that the first list that I have created, I'm gonna give it a name, call that list as my conditions, and that is my first list. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a second step, put in a comma, and you can create a second step, and the second step is going to be results. 
And what are my results? My results are 10% commission, 15% commission, 20% commission, or 25% commission. And again, that is going to be in a list format. So I'm just going to start to initiate a list with the curly braces and within which I will write those four numbers. Once I've written the four numbers down, especially the results in the form of a list, let's just close the let in the in loop. So I started this by the let and I'm going to close this with the in and I'm going to say that, hey, why don't you now show me the results? So I have the results right here. And if I click OK, what I'm going to see is the four numbers as a list. So I just click on OK. If I preview the list, I'm going to get to see the four numbers, the 10%, the 15%, the 20% and the 25%. Now let's just play a trick to kind of visualize what's going to happen now. So I'm just going to go ahead and instead of returning one list as an output, which is the results list, I'm going to start to return both the lists as an output. Just to help you visualize it, we're not kind of committing to the formula yet. So I'm going to maybe use a function called list.combine because I'm trying to combine or return two lists. My first list is going to be my conditions list and my second list is going to be my results list and I'm going to make a list out of that. So this and this is going to be in a list. Close that and click on OK. Now I still get a list but this time I have returned two lists not one. So that was my first list which is where the second value was true and therefore I should now pick up this particular number. And if I take a look at the second one here, the first value is true and therefore I should pick up the first number right here. How do I do that in Power Query? Now, if you look closely, this is some sort of a lookup that I have to do something like this. Take a look at this particular list. Why don't you find the position of the true? True is on the first position and therefore you should pick up the first number from here. Now just go on to the next one. Hey, take a look at this list. Find the position of true. True is on the second position and you should then pick up the second number from here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, how do I do that? I'm just going to go back and start to edit my formula. In the formula, I'm going to say something like, hey, the final output is going to be from the list called results. But I would like to pick up a particular number and the number is going to be a lookup value of the value true. So I'm going to go ahead and write something like list dot position of because I'm trying to find the position of the value true. So list dot position of and I'll start the bracket. The first part is nothing but a list. So I will feed my conditions list in the conditions list. The value that I'm trying to find is the true value uh, T R U E. I'm going to close the bracket and I'm going to close the curly braces towards in the end. Now, if you take a look at this, what you're trying to say is that, hey, I have a conditions list which is which is nothing but this one. In this one, you why don't you find the value true and that is going to be the second value. And once you get the two as an output of this particular list dot positions function, why don't you just pick up that number two off the results list? Simple as that. Now I'm going to click on OK. And that is my output using something similar to a switch function. Although I do understand that the formula might look a tad bit complicated, but it allows for scalability. Let's just take a look. If I go back to the formula and I start to make a tweak in the condition, you're going to see that how easy is that to edit this condition without getting into the trap of nested ifs and probably getting into errors. So I'm just going to maybe delete this particular uh, condition right here and I'm going to copy the previous row and I'm going to start to say that, hey, now this time I'm looking at numbers which are beyond 14,500 and the amount should be greater than 14,600, less than 14,600. And that is one condition. And uh, then I'm going to say, hey, I have one more condition amount greater than 14,600. And those are my conditions. And I'm just going to get rid of the end part. Now, those are my conditions that I have written. And now there are how many conditions? We have one, two, three, four and five conditions. And therefore, also, I'm going to have five outputs in here. So I'm going to say 25 percent output and then 0 0.3, 30 percent output. And then I'm going to maybe have, let's say, a 35 percent output. Right. That is nothing but uh, my condition or my results. And now as soon as I click on OK, I'm going to start to see that the outputs do have changed for the conditions that I have added. It becomes so much simpler rather than wrangling around with the nested if statements.
All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find this trick of almost trying to replicate the switch behavior, but using lists instead. If you have any questions around this, I would be waiting for them in the comments below. And before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query and especially my M language courses. These are the exact, perhaps even more complicated problems we discuss in the course. I teach you the logic first as to how do you think about a problem? How do you construct the logic? And then how do you start to solve difficult problems Problems, even of your own data by yourself. If you're interested, the link is in the description of the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye now.